Many of you watching this have normal vision. Oh sure, you might have to find your reading glasses if you want to read a good book, and you might have to make sure that there's enough light around to see it. But for the most part, many of you see rather well. For others, seeing things clearly isn't quite so easy. For example, how do people with less than perfect vision use the web? What kinds of technology is available? And what can web designers do to make their pages easier to use by people who don't see quite so clearly? Vision loss can take many forms, and it can be mild or quite extreme. For example, some people have hypersensitivity to glare, while others may be colorblind. Some may see an entire image, but it might be either blurred or clouded, while others might see the center of the image, often referred to as tunnel vision, and others still might see the edges of the image, often called peripheral vision. Hello, my name is Neil Ewers, and I work for the Trace Research and Development Center, which is a part of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I too happen to have a vision condition. I am totally blind. I have my friend John Clad here today. I've asked him to come and talk to us about his specific vision condition and how he uses technology to access the web. Hi John, it's good to have you. Hi Neil, thank you for having me. Can you begin by telling us a little bit about who you are and how you do use technology to access the web? Sure. I'm a graduate student here at UW. I'm also employed by the university. I have a form of macular degeneration that has taken uh, a good part of my central vision. And although my visual acuity is below 2200, I'm usually able to use most printed material, such as web pages, uh, as long as they're blown up by a power of four. I can show you briefly how I uh, navigate not only computer technology, but specifically the web. I use a, a screen enlargement program called ZoomText, and as you can see, uh, it enlarges everything on the screen. It makes everything, all of the print, nice and big and easy to read. And it's one of the features that I like about ZoomText is it comes with a couple different options. One of the problems with having this screen so large is that only a portion of the screen actually fits on to my monitor at one time. Ooh. So it's very easy to um, kind of become disoriented or, or lose track of where I am. John, the reason I said ooh was the fact that I realized that when you zoom as highly as you can zoom, you must only be able to read one or two or three words at a time. And that's kind of like what happens to me when I use my screen reader, which speaks, and therefore I only hear one word at a time. So I would guess that if you had vision in low enough to have to have that kind of magnification, it'd be really hard to figure out what was on the screen. It, it can become very difficult, especially as the magnification goes up. I can adjust the magnification so that um, essentially one word or just two numbers are fitting on the screen. And in those situations, it becomes uh, very disorienting. One of the ways to get around that problem is to simply switch the function of the magnification. This option is actually like a, a handheld magnifier where only the portion under the magnifying box actually becomes magnified. With this option, I can actually see the entire uh, document that I'm working on or the entire web page that I'm working with, but at the same time, I can magnify the, the pieces that I really need to see. On this page, while I can't see any of the exact text, I can tell that there's a column of information on the left, there appears to be a column of more detailed information on the right, and up in the right-hand corner, it looks like there's something, could possibly be links. I'm looking for pieces of, inf of information that give me context to what the page is all about. I'm also looking for pieces inf of information that match the context of the task I'm trying to uh, complete. John, can you give us an example? Sure. Uh, a couple months ago, I was doing a research project on uh, using human subjects in research, and this particular page is one that I came to quite often. There are symbols next to each of these links, and each of these symbols represent a different issue in human subjects research. And what I found is, 
after coming to the page a number of times, I no longer had to start to differentiate between the headings and the descriptions of the headings and the various links. All I needed to do was find the appropriate symbol and click on the link and I could access the page that I wanted. Uh, this was a, a perfect example of uh, how context can actually guide my task and can actually facilitate um, the work that I'm doing. John, do you use color at all to figure out how to get around a page? Yeah, actually, uh, color is a pretty important element of the page. On the UW homepage, up in the right-hand corner, there's a list of links, and the top row of links is in red, and the row of links right below that is in orange. It's easy to distinguish between these links. I don't necessarily confuse them as one. Uh, the screen magnifier obviously enlarges the text, but it doesn't necessarily prevent me from uh, making simple mistakes. I'm, not, I'm still not reading it real clearly, and this simple use of color creates a distinction that, uh, that's very helpful. John, you can see color, but there are a number of people who are colorblind. And if, for example, you went to a page that had stocks, and the green ones were going up and the red ones were going down, you'd be lost. Yeah, I, I certainly would. Uh, and you're right, I can distinguish the colors, and that's a big help for me. For those people who are colorblind, I know that some magnification software comes with um, s different settings that try to accommodate that. They'll filter in certain colors or filter out certain colors. Uh, you can change the background setting. Um, so there are some things that, that can be done. What about spacing, John? Does the spacing of text and other elements on a page help? Yeah, it really does. Uh, because of the way the magnification software works, a little extra spacing between lines and a little extra spacing between links actually helps me quite a bit. When pages become too cluttered and there's too much information packed into a small area, uh, it actually becomes fairly confusing to try to figure out what the text is saying and, and follow where I am on a page. And honestly, sometimes it becomes a little overwhelming. This UW homepage actually contains a great deal of information. There's an awful lot of uh, resources and links to other pages, but as you can see, there's a tremendous amount of space. There's a lot of space in between the lines. The print is nice and big, even without the magnification software. Um, things certainly do not look cluttered. Um, and, and because of that, I find it very easy to use. Do you ever use shapes like blocks of text or boxes or anything like that to help get around? Certainly, uh, shapes are uh, similar to color and, and space in that they help me understand what's on the page. Um, blocks of text, search bars positioned somewhere in the, uh, in the page give me clues as to um, where to find particular things on, on the web page. And I think that um, web designers with you know, some careful thought about how they're using color, shape, and space really help people navigate uh, their task. I know that your magnification software can speak as well as magnify, and it would seem to me that if you were losing a lot of your vision, being able to hear something and see it at the same time would be really helpful. Can you show us how that works? Sure. The magnification software that I use has something called a doc reader, and it will read all of the text on the page, and at the same time it will put the text on a ticker at the top of the page, so you get a chance to hear it as well as see it. Play button. The University of Wisconsin-Madison. I'll search my Oak Quick Links timetable directories, employment, help news, and events, events calendar, Oak Madison to require. Right. One of the added benefits of having the text go through the ticker is that all of the text becomes standardized. So if um, the page has text that's in a lot of different fonts or different sizes, or if it's in red and difficult to read, uh, as it goes through the ticker, it all becomes one size, it becomes a, a style of font that's very easy to read, and it's white text on a black background. That would seem to be awful easy for lots of people with different conditions like color blindness to use. Can you use that without having it speak? Yeah, yeah, and that's actually the way I usually use it. You mentioned font, John, and I know that font size and font family are really important and should be things that web developers keep in mind. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And uh, font color and background are also important to me. Well, John, I'd have to say that you've certainly helped me, a person who is totally blind, understand a lot more about what it's like for you to navigate the web. 
And if you can show me, a totally blind person, how it is, then you've obviously spoken to a lot of other people as well. I really appreciate your being here. Thank you for having me. I had a good time. This video is a cooperative effort of the Trace Center, the Division of Information Technology, and the Instructional Media Development Center, all located on the Madison campus of the University of Wisconsin. Hello, my name is Neil Ewers, and I work for the Trace Research and Development Center. One of my many jobs here is to provide information that will help people design websites that work well for people who are blind and use screen readers to access the web. The problems and solutions discussed in this video focus specifically on enhancing web pages for screen reader users. However, these enhancements also benefit others, including those who use alternative browsing devices, such as web-enabled cell phones and Palm Pilots. People who use text-only browsers, have slow modems, or turn off their images so pages load faster also benefit. Exactly what is a screen reader? A screen reader speaks the text on the page. It can also present this text via a braille display, but it cannot present or interpret images. It can only present one word at a time. So, unlike a sighted user who can see the entire screen, the screen reader user hears a string of text. This makes it very difficult to get an overall idea of both content and page layout. We'll be using a number of screen readers in this video. We'll be exploring a few simple things that people can do to make their websites accessible to screen reader users, as well as a variety of emerging technologies. Let's use Internet Explorer to open an example page we created for a fictional company called Exclamation Software. We didn't want to pick on specific companies with problem websites, so we created pages for this video that illustrate some of the problems and solutions we have found on the web. If you were sitting here beside me, you would be able to describe what you see on the screen. But listen to what the screen reader says when I try to read the information. Page has three links. Well, that's not very helpful but I can do two quick things to see if there's information on the page. First, let me arrow down and read any information that might be there. Blank, blank, blank. Well, that certainly sounds like a page with no information to me. The second thing I can do is to tab to links. My screen reader told me that there were three links on the page. So let's see if I can tab to those links. Tab, tab, tab. If there are links here, that must certainly mean that there is information on the page, but I sure can't read it. Without any information, I can't even be sure I'm on the right page. While seemingly blank pages like this can be frustrating for screen reader users, perhaps more frustrating are pages that make little or no sense at all. Let's try opening another page. Page has three links. Graphic spacer. Graphic spacer. Graphic 1,234,393.gif Well, there's definitely information here, but my screen reader is reading gibberish. When I find pages like this, I have to give up. The information just doesn't make any sense. Fortunately, it doesn't take much work to make this site completely accessible. In fact, it's quite easy to do. You just have to add alt text. Short for alternative text, alt text is simply a way to provide text equivalents to non-text elements on a page. This includes images, graphical representations of text, 
including symbols, image map regions, animations, scripts, and images used as list bullets, spacers, graphical buttons, etc. Let's discover how easy it is to add alt text. A good way for page authors to evaluate the alt text that has been added is to turn images off. As you can see, when you turn images back on, the addition of the alt text has no effect on the final appearance of the page. Now that we've added alt text, let's read this page again. Page has three links, graphic exclamation software logo, link English, link Spanish, link German. Now that's much better. This page obviously uses alt text. Without it, I might as well have been reading in Spanish or German. Although including alt text is an essential part of building accessible sites, what that alt text says is equally important. As we heard earlier, what screen readers find on the page can sometimes make very little sense. Let me load a new page and I'll show you what I mean. Loading page. Load done. Link question mark inside blue box link icon with four numbers and four lines link stylized right arrow screen readers and the web flexible content for an increasingly diverse audience. Once again, this information is not very helpful. The icons provide sighted users with some clues about the function of the buttons, but what would you guess these buttons would do if you were blind and heard them announced by the screen reader? Link question mark inside blue box link icon. There are some important things to remember when you're applying alt text in this kind of example. The function of a button is more important than what it looks like. So, in this example, the alt text should not say stylized right arrow. When we have the screen reader read the corrected page, it says, Link help. Link table of contents. Visited link next slide. Now these buttons give me the information I need. Another thing to consider is the clarity and length of the alt text. It's most helpful when what's being described is stated as clearly and concisely as possible. As alt text gets longer, it could actually become more confusing or take more time than it is helpful. One solution in these cases is the use of D-links for longer descriptions when they're needed. A D-link is used to provide an in-depth description of something the author of the page wants to include more details about. So the alt text gives you a quick description of the image's function. The D-link gives you a longer description if you need it. Let me load a page and show you what I mean by a D-link. Loading page. Load done. Sales exclamation software. Sales by category. Link D. As I read this page, you heard my screen reader say D-Link. When I hear that, I know that there's a longer description of this image I can read. Let's see what's in this particular D-Link description. Link D. Enter. H has one heading and one link. Sales chart descriptive text version. The pie chart illustrates a categorical breakdown of the software sold by exclamation in 2001. Total sales reached $1.2 million in the following categories. 36% communications, 25% productivity, 24% entertainment, 13% multimedia. Link return to sales page. Now this is nice information to have. And because it was done as a D-link and not as alt text, I can choose to read it or ignore it. One other important thing to remember about making web pages accessible is that in most instances, accessibility enhancements don't change the appearance of the page. The alt text that we've added can only be seen when you turn off images in the browser. And with the D-Link, there is only a small, very unobtrusive D on the graphical page. But this is the only instance where the graphical version of the page will be altered. Older screen readers and some other devices only render the alt text when images are not loaded. So, the best way to know how effective your alt text really is, is to turn off images in the browser, or view your pages with a text-only browser, such as links, and see if you get all the information you want people to know about when they visit your site. In short, 
If you use alt text, everybody wins. One simple thing that can be done to make a page more accessible is to use header tags correctly. Because screen readers only read one word at a time, it's really difficult to get a quick overview of the content of the page. You can greatly help with this by using well thought out headers that have been appropriately marked. Headers allow users to orient themselves to and be informed about the organization and structure of a page. One rule of thumb to follow as a web author is to make sure your headers make sense when read out of context. Let me load a page and show you what I mean. I want to purchase a book called A Painted House from an online bookstore. Again, because we didn't want to pick on actual inaccessible sites, we created a fictitious page. If the headers are marked, I can bring up a list of headers which I can peruse to get an idea of the major sections of the page. You can see them because they visually stand out on the page. So let's see how many headers are on this page. No headings found the document. Okay, that's not very helpful. I can see that it'll take me a very long time to find this book. For you, it will be much easier because the page is visually broken into several sections and headers are defined by characteristics like font size, bold text, and white space around various sections of the page. But imagine a web page without these characteristics. All you would normally have to do is to quickly glance down the page and find the fiction section. But header tags aren't being used on this page. As a result, my screen reader can't find them. And now that we've visually taken them away, neither can you. If my screen reader can't find headers on the page, there are only two ways I can get an overview of the information. I can read every word on the page. Eclipse Books Top Sellers. Eclipse Books Link Help. Link Order. Link Search. Link Contact. Quick Links. Link Community Info. Link What's New. Link Readers Picks. Link Award Winners. Link Library Cards. Top Sellers List. Each week, we poll our readers about their favorites and publish the top six selections in various categories. See what our readers had to say this week. This could take a very long time, and I still haven't found the book I want. The other thing I could do is to tab to all the links on the page. Tab Help Link. Tab Order Link. Tab Search Link. Tab Contact Link. Tab Community Info Link. Tab What's New Link. Tab Readers Picks Link, Tab Award Winners Link, Tab Library Cards Link, Tab MR Brown Can Move Can You Link, Tab... As you can see, this is not a very satisfactory way to do it, because I'm not really getting a very clear idea about the page layout. It's actually a very problematic way to go about looking at the page, because if I'm simply tabbing to links, I can cross into the links associated with the next header without knowing it. This can get really confusing, and I still haven't found my book. If this page had used the correct markup for headers, I would not have had the tab at all. I could have simply gone to the fiction header and easily found my book. So let's load a version of the same page that's been marked up correctly. Notice that the visual effect has been maintained. I'll bring up the header list. Top sellers list one, two of eight. Children's 2, 3 of 8. Nonfiction 2, 4 of 8. Parenting 2, 5 of 8. Fiction 2, 6 of 8. Ah, there's the fiction section. I know my book is in this section, so I'll press enter on the header and the screen reader will skip directly to it. I can then arrow down to the book titles under this heading. Link a painted house. And there's the book I want. I can actually get there more quickly. While the header list is on the screen, I can press the first letter of the header I want, and I'll be taken directly to that header. F Fiction 2, 6 of 8. What's also nice is that the screen reader will announce each header as I arrow across it. Heading level 1, top sellers list. Blank. 
Each week we poll our readers about their favorites and publish the top six selections in various categories. See what our readers had to say this week. Blank. Heading level two. Children's. Hearing the announcement of each header as I'm reading the other information on the page really helps me understand how all the information is laid out. Another nice thing about navigating the headers on the page is that the screen reader user can go directly to the first header and thus skip all the unwanted information, which may not need to be read at all. In the past, I've had to wade through a lot of navigation and advertising information in order to get to the meat of the page. Even on this page, there is information at the top that I really don't want to take the time to read. This is especially true when I've become familiar with the site. But if the page has headers, I can skip directly to them by doing one of two things. I can press a keystroke to go to the first header on the page. Top sellers list, level one. Or, as I demonstrated earlier, I can bring up the header list and select any header I want. This is a real time saver for me and other screen reader users. In summary, a well-organized page that uses header tags and other website guidelines supported by the W3C benefits screen reader users as well as people who use alternative browsing devices such as cell phones, Palm Pilots, and text-only browsers. In other words, everyone will have a more positive experience when they visit your pages. The nice thing is, you don't have to make your site unattractive in order to give everyone that kind of quality experience. Thank you for taking the time to learn about web accessibility. Happy web developing. I'm Neil Ewers. I work for the Trace Research and Development Center here in Madison. And one of my jobs is to look at all applications, web browsers, word processors, etc., to see how well they work with screen readers. A screen reader is a piece of software that allows the user to hear via a speech synthesizer or touch via a braille display the information on the screen. The screen reader will follow along and say exactly what I'm doing. Synthesizer test dot dot. Synthesizer test dot, that's the one we want. This is the eloquent speech synthesizer. Most synthesizers are able to speak at a variety of speech rates and a variety of vocal pitches. Many speak with different voices and some even speak in different languages. I can ask the screen reader to tell me various things about what I'm reading. For example, if I'm on a title, and I press insert F, it's going to tell me some information about the text. Character formatting, Times New Roman, 16 point, bolded, style, heading 1, line spacing, single paragraph formatting, aligned left, outline level 1. Now that's a whole bunch of text, but what I discern from that is it's a title, it's a certain style level in Word, and I know that it's a font size bigger than what I've been dealing with. But I only did that because I sort of thought I was on a title. The point is, it, it takes an awful long time for a screen reader user to get a layout even of a simple page. One of the things I can't do is use the mouse. I can move it along a mouse pad, and I have no clue where the mouse pointer on the screen is. What screen readers have done to help get around this is to allow the user to use the number pad keys to actually move the mouse pointer. And the screen reader gives me an ability to read by sentence by doing alt down arrow. This is the eloquent speech synthesizer.
Or I can read by word. Pitches peer many. Speak with. Or by letter. Space W-I-T-H space. Once again, I'm only using the keystrokes that you could use in Word. I am only reading a word at a time. If I were able to see the screen, I would know that there were a couple titles on the screen that are in bold letters, and they're centered, and they're in larger text. I can't see that. So the problem a blind user has is that one begins to read not knowing anything about the layout of the page. The only way you know what's on the page is when you get to it. Greg Vanderheiden, our director, has often referred to it as the soda straw approach. You're looking through this small hole. You're reading one word at a time, and that's all you see. And that's all I hear until I get to the next word. I have no clue that down halfway down the page is a bold heading. Just the other day I was reading something that made no sense to me whatsoever until I got to about what I assumed the middle of the page was and then what was on the middle of the page said read the text below and use these instructions to fill out the top part of the page. Well, geez, you know, if I'd seen, I would have gone right there. But my problem as a screen reader user is I can't. Another application that is used a lot by people who use screen readers is the World Wide Web. And let's say I wanted to go to the trace page. I type it in. T-R-A-C-E, P-R-W-I-S-C-E-E-D-U. And hit enter. Enter. Page has 40 links. Trace Research and Development Center. Graphic Trace Center. College of Engineering. University of Wisconsin-Madison. And what you heard it say is it told me how many links were on the page. It told me the title of the page. Now that said graphic because if the graphics had been on in the browser, there would have been a picture there of that text. And because graphics are off, we use the alt text, which tells me what the graphic would have been. One of the things the screen reader allows me to do is to bring up a list of links so I can really get an overview of just the links on the page. So if I do insert F7. Links list dialog. Links list view. Frequently asked questions and so I can arrow down now and I know that everything I get to is a link what's new at the trace center help using this site list information and archives screen readers allow me to basically have uh, access to the printed page which I've had before but it's mostly been in the form of people reading books to me on tape there's a lot less time taken now for me to do things. There's a lot less work involved. There's a lot less dependence on others for reading stuff to me. Um, I have done this often enough that I get used to reading pretty rapidly. So one of the things I can do is actually speed up the way in which the screen reader reads. And the 53. higher the numbers go, the faster it goes. 64, 75, 86, 97, 108, 119. This is about the speed at which I read. So if I then tab back to the OK button, and then we read the document. You understood that, right?